How are you? Good. Good. How is everybody? Good. Thank you. So this week is a teacher appreciation week, and we want to start with that. We want to say thank you to all the teachers around there, around the world, for working now and helping helping students to continue learning from home. Thank yes. you. Thank you to teachers. Do you do you guys there is an <clears throat> Roxanne, sorry my voice. Uh, do you have any memories of like how in your countries how do you celebrate this week or the teacher appreciation day? Yeah, any? actually in in Mexico is May 15 the teachers day. So I remember that sometimes that was like a red day, but then I also was remembering that we sometimes used to have these festivals to celebrate teachers. So yeah, oh, it was nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you give like a free day for teachers. Yes, exactly. Cool. <laughs> a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I remember, I don't know if we had like um a teacher appreciation week in um specific, but we have always at the end of the year, we always bring uh something for the teacher. Mm. We uh, give some kind of gifts or, uh, for example, we had the fir uh, same teacher for the uh, first four years. And then when we went to fifth grade, we had a different teacher. But at the end of the fourth grade, we gave her a cherry tree so she can always remember mm. us and she can Aww. plant the cherry tree on her yard. So That's nice. That's, nice. That's super nice. Do you have any, uh, any memories like that, Teresa, that you want to share? or for the Teacher Appreciation Week? No, but I had a really good teacher that I remember uh, from my childhood, which was my piano teacher. Uh, so just a shout out to her. She was really, really great and my favorite teacher of all time. Yeah. And of course, uh, people who are watching this live now, please share your memories with your, with your great teachers or if you wanna tag your favorite teacher, you can also, of course, do that, uh, especially in the Facebook. It's easy to tag their your favorite teacher and send them hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a lot of people already joining. Amazing. Yeah, and as usual, if you have any questions for us, also put them in the comments. Let us know where you're from uh, and have a great time. Yes, thank you, teachers. <laughs> well, we can go to the topic of today. So today we're going to have three special guests here. So we're going to have an interview with Aaron Locke, our curriculum developer from Pitsco. We're going to also talk with our Claudia Scafesi, our product owner of Student Kit as well. We're going to have our student project, Zach. Jack is going to present her Arduino project that he's been building now at home. Mm -hmm. And after our guests, uh, Therese is going to show uh, one of the lessons from the Student Kit platform and also one of the projects you have already connected and programmed one of the projects. So you're going to have a live demo for our audience. That's right. But uh, before uh, having the talking with our guests, I guess we could uh, tell the updates that we have at our remote learning site. So I can share my screen. So arduino.cc slash remote learning. And we have now updated the looks of the website. So it's it can look a bit different than it was last week. If you have checked it last week, for example, we have updated the page today once again. So there is a new tutorial for starter kit. There's a project number four, color mixing lamp. Is there anyone in the audience? You can comment uh, if you already have uh, bought your starter kit or if you have a starter kit at home and you have started to go through these videos and build your projects together with us. It would be nice to hear if someone has used this themselves or if you have used this uh, with your children or with your students. We're always happy to hear if uh, like, we want to hear if you have some feedback so you can of course use the contact form at this website to tell us what do you like and if there's something that you would like us to include in the tutorial videos. Here on the website, you can of course also join the live sessions. You can sign up for them so you get a reminder. 
And then we have two new articles. There's understanding basic coding terminology and how the pandemic is highlighting the need of digital skills. So go check them out if you haven't yet. And like we uh, explained last week, we have the forum dedicated for, or uh, there's a channel or how do you, how do you call it in forum? Teres? Like a, it's not a channel, Support. but what do you call? Sorry? Forum? Like the forum, right? Yeah, the yeah. forum. Mm -hmm. Remote learning forum. <laughs> yeah, okay. So but inside our Arduino forum, we have that for, mm -hmm. for remote learning. So you can share your experiences with other educators or if you want to ask help. Mm -hmm. Yes? Perfect. Okay. Let me remove my screen. Okay. So Just remember that we every week uh, put new things on the site. So every time we're putting new things, so you can check it weekly to see what is the new stuff that is going on on the platform. Yes. Yeah, we update it a few times a week. So there's mm -hmm. going to be, for example, content for the new student kit. There's going to be introduction videos and those kind of things. So you should always go check it out at least once a week. I would yeah. Say. But I think it's time for our first guest, and that is your turn. I think so, too. So our first guest is a student from the US. His name is Zach. So welcome, Zach. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. So you, where do you live? Um, I, live in, I live in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. So for you, it's in the morning? Yes. Well then, good morning. Thank you. So, how do you feel learning from home? Um, I like being at home, but I miss like I miss my friends and like going places. And stuff yeah, like of course. Are you able to meet your friends online still? Uh, yeah, like mm. videos, calling mm -hmm. and stuff. Uh, what is the most difficult thing with learning from home? Um, sometimes it's hard to like contact my teachers if there's something I don't understand mm, the online strange. learning. Do you usually write to them in a chat or email? Um, it's uh, email. Email. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so it can take a bit of time. Uh, but you're using Arduino also to learn, right? Yes. So for how long have you been using Arduino? Um, I've had the kit for like probably two or three years. So. Okay, so you're 12, is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, so you started already when you were about nine or 10. Yeah. So that's pretty young. You're using our starter kit, which is intended for students from 14. So it's really cool to see such a young uh, student using the starter kit. But how did, you, how did you start learning it? Like, did someone introduce you to it or did you find it online or? My my uncle Jake sent the starter kit to me, and then we were me and my dad started working on it. Oh, that's super cool! So you have your dad to help you also, right? Yeah, that's nice. Um, so could you maybe show us your project that you've been doing? Uh, yeah. So it's the. Uh, digital hourglass project oh, cool. from the starter kit, mm -hmm. but um, I changed the time so I can use it to keep track of like how long I'm practicing my saxophone and stuff. Oh, that's super nice. So you're also a saxophone player. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So it's so the the digital hourglass for the audience that doesn't have the starter kit yet is a project where you learn to make uh, a timer, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's super cool. Thank you, Zach. Um, so what do you like about the starter kits? Um, it's really cool, and I, it like lets me like build like circuits and do coding. It's really fun. That's nice. So it's a fun way to learn. Yeah, it's really great. Um, is there anything you would like to tell other students and teachers starting to learn Arduino? Um, it's really fun and like it can help you learn coding and stuff and circuits and things and like 
technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you, Zach. It was really nice having you here, seeing your project. Is there anything else that you would like to say to the audience or anyone have anything? Uh, no? I don't know. Okay, that's fine. So just say thank you, uh, Zach, and we'll go back to Rox and Melissa. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Zach. Thank you. That's awesome how like super young kid yeah. is learning Arduino by himself and already build like cool stuff. So mm -hmm. thank you, Zach, for sharing. Hope like it's cool. like an inspiration. Nice to see that uh, parents can help their kids with the starter kits. And I think that goes to parents, even if parents doesn't have any knowledge because yeah. it's a kit that is supposed to be for anyone without any prior experience. Exactly. Yeah, and it was nice to nice to hear that he used it for saxophone. So it was yeah. something that it was meaningful for him also. Yeah, it's a little tight with the, the projects we did uh, two sessions ago about, because we were having an issue try to manage in our time, like working uh, from home. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. also did that. So it's really nice to see how you can change or use the starter kit to solve some issues. So you can also try guys and let us know what are you building with the starter kit. You should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. you can use the hashtag Arduino at home. For example, if you have social media accounts and you want to share your project, um, for example, on Instagram, you can use the hashtag and we always <laughs> nice. We always check that if there's new projects. And also you can send those projects. Uh, if you have a video of your project, you can share the link to that video in the comments section in YouTube or in Facebook or or then use the contact form, for example, the forum. So a lot of different channels if you don't have, for example, your own social media account. So Yeah. So thanks, Zach, okay. again. And it's my turn to <laughs> talk about the student kit. It is. Yes. Leave it to you. The student, yeah, the student kit has a lot of the same components as the starter kit. So check. Thank you. So uh, I'm going to have a short recap for what is a student, Arduino student kit. We introduced it last week in our live show. And today we're going to talk about more, more about the student kit and here's just a, like a short introduction to what it is. If there, if there's someone who wasn't uh, listening last week, or if you haven't noticed our post in social media, but the Arduino Student Kit is a hands-on program to learn the basics of programming, coding, and electronics step by step. You learn about, for example, current, voltage, digital logic, programming, and you you do this through famous inventions in the history of technology. This kit includes, like you can see in the picture, there's the Arduino Uno Rev3. Uh, there's also a collection of sensors and actuators, and then there's a multimeter. Uh, but it's not only the physical kit that you get when you purchase the kit, uh, you also get access to an online platform. And the online platform includes nine lessons that are all 90 minute, uh, 90 minute long, and it also comes with two open-ended projects. And each lesson builds uh, from the previous one. So we provide the further opportunity to apply the skills and concepts that students have already learned. So you go them through from one to two, three, and you always learn a bit more. And you, in the open-ended project, you, you can use these skills then the way you want. Uh, one student needs one kit. And it's now available in English. And soon it's going to be available in Spanish and Italian. But so it's not only me talking about the student kit. I also have here the product owner of student kit, Claudio Scafesi. Welcome. Hello. Are you muted? Now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Now, now it's good. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I think Hello. Was muted. Hi, everybody. I'm Elisa, I'm Teresa, I'm Rox. Hey, now you're, you're in Italy. Italy. Yeah, yeah, I'm in, uh, in Turin. Okay, yeah, we have one of as, the offices in Turin. Yeah, as many would say, for, for the people that does not know where Turin is, next to Milan. 
Yeah, but true. I mean, not not really Turin friendly. <laughs> Yeah. I By visited, the way, yeah. Yeah, I visited you guys once there. It's it's a nice place. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, uh, definitely, definitely. You also pandemic apart. The... Yeah. Sorry, I think we have a bit delay. That's why I'm talking on top of you. Let's make long pauses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, if you could tell to our audience, where did the idea for the student gate came from? So, um, how can I say that? Basically, it came from this um, need of providing answers and to the educators and the parents at home during this pandemic. So, our life has changed completely during these last two months, especially in Italy. Uh, so, we did uh, actually, we needed to adapt, we needed to have a, a a strong answer especially to, to to the education world so our idea was um as for all the education products that we have educational products that we have was to focus and start from the need of the customer so build a customer centric product uh, the main goal and the main issue in there was that all our educational products are made to be used by groups of students because one of our learning outcomes, uh, a part of the project-based um, uh, work and studies is to learn to uh, the basic activities of the teamwork. So the challenging part in there was to actually set apart the teamwork, uh, let's say like that, and focus on a single usage in a remote uh, homeschooling solution. Yeah, because so. yeah, a lot of the products that we have, they're classroom solutions. So you uh, purchase one kit for the whole classroom. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So that was the tricky part to like change completely the mindset of our products and yeah. create a new one. And I guess there we can come to my next question. The student kit is especially made for homeschooling. What does it mean? This is a good point, actually, because uh, it's made for homeschooling because we try to make make it simple and really easy to use uh, in a terms of like access to the platform. Um, so it's a single user kit. So when you use it, you basically receive the box with the kit and a registration code, and then you register your product uh, and you have access to an online platform that has a step by step guide um in in the way you should go through the content so all the content and all the lectures have a really step-by-step -step approach so it's really easy to follow and uh, this is actually made for as you said before for students older than 11 years old between 11 and 14 years old let's say like that like middle schools so we, the, the challenging part was how can we build actually, um, let's say, the, such a content, uh, such an easy to use content also for this kind of students. So th this was the trickiest part. Also the registration, how to handle, um, let's say, user data and things like that. So yeah, that was the trickiest yeah. part. In it. Yeah, especially normally we have, for example, the uh, teacher can enroll all the students. So now, now it's easy when the student gets the kit. There's a there's a site that you need to access, but then you don't have to create your own Arduino account, for example, for the student. Exactly, exactly. No need to create an Arduino account, so you can easily access the content okay. once you receive the box. Yeah. Uh, there was a question uh, actually. Uh, uh, if I'm a parent. Do I need to know everything about coding and electronics so I can support my child using the student kit? Because not everyone knows that, and that's that's okay. So th this is this was actually one of our goals uh, to achieve, uh, let's say, a sort of product that does does not need any prior uh, knowledge on these topics. So um, we let's say that we we've tweaked the product. Uh, and our educational offer in such a way that the teamwork should be done, like let's say, in a sort of pair programming with the parent or with the educator that the, the student has at home. 
So it's a kind of uh, learning together experience. Uh, there is actually something that you, the students will find in a second moment in the um, uh, in the work world, like especially in the technical areas, the pair programming uh, sessions are really a standard. So that session is which you have probably a developer that is writing the code and the one the other one sitting next to, to him just looking at the things that he is doing, such as they are two writing the same things together with two brains. So it's like learning together side by side. Uh, and we've tried to outline and underline this value of um, because we were missing the teamwork part in this moment of uh, pandemic. So yeah, I think it, it sounds really nice that you can learn about coding and electronics together with your children, for example. So you, yeah, so you can be a student again. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. It, 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 it can be actually really challenging and really interesting if you're not used to and you don't know uh, much about these topics. Uh, and especially in this, um, let's say, um, customer centricity approach that we had, we've tried to do this uh, internally, especially internally with some of our employees and colleagues uh, that have, let's say, children in that uh, range age. So. We've done some advanced user testing also with them to experience the flow of registration of the products and the feelings. Uh, we, we received quite good results until now. So we, we really, we're really looking forward on having more feedbacks um, and things to, to improve if there is something to improve. Or, um, so we are really looking forward for your feedback out there. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like, it's, like I said before, that uh, before we start a kid, if, if people have some feedback about the uh, tutorial videos that we have at the moment, but of course we want to also hear all the feedback that people who have bought the student kit now, so they can contact through the platform that comes with the student kit or. No, yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, and we, w as the entire company now, we are really reactive and we are really looking yeah. outside and look into the community out there. So every comment, every feedback is really precious. So it will be great to, uh, let's say, develop and further develop this product together and improve it. Then we had a question uh, from educator point of view, kind of like, uh, is there a way for me to keep track of my students now that uh, the, uh, we're doing this remotely and what they have learned kind of then maybe evaluate them? Is, is, is there something in the student kit that helps the educators? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, there is um, a logbook with exercises for every lecture that we have inside the, the, the kit. Uh, we wanted to make it easy. So there, 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 there is no extra tools or extra softwares that you need to use to evaluate your students. Uh, is a sort of exactly an exercise book with exercises for each lecture. Uh, so you can check the, the progress of your students um, by checking this uh, exercise book. So it's really easy. Um, and I think this, this is actually one of the, um, let's say, um, smartest things uh, that we can do in, 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 in this difficult moment in which probably there is also a lack of internet connection or um, materials. So basically for the student kit, you need a computer, yes. But in order to program your Arduino, you don't need an internet connection. You don't need to, to have an internet connection to access the logbook once you've downloaded it. So it's, it's easier to be tracked. Yeah, and I would say like also we have the the open ended project in the student kit. Uh, do you have any tips for how to? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, let's say that the content, but I, I'm not going into deep details uh, for the content because uh, yeah. I don't want to do any spoiler uh, for the next guest. But um, there are two open ended projects. There are more, let's say. Uh, adaptable to your environment. So you can easily um, uh, adapt that project to your environment, your own uh, house, home, or uh, garden, or whatever thing. 
uh, and there is there are some project grid lines that uh, you can check uh, and you can let's say uh, that you can check these object uh, objectives or learning outcomes directly in these pro open-ended projects but i i want to add something that actually i think is really important um one thing uh, that i stress every time out uh, when we talk about arduino and especially in this moment uh, of pandemic is the fact that um, people all the people are now into technology into screens into the computer into smartphones and this is actually a, a way to have the first steps in what we've called we, we call actually physical computing so you can interact with the physical world using the digital one and vice versa so we wanted a product and an education tool that um, makes available and easy uh, for the student to tinker and build and uh, and build things manually um, by bridging them with the technology. So these things can, in general, with the entire Arduino ecosystem can be uh, a huge value, but it's something different to approach, uh, especially in, in that years. So um, I, I think this is really, an opportunity for for this age, uh, and it can be, let's say, um, a nice habit to achieve. Yeah, and I would say that it's also really nice that when you, I think a lot of people now they're spending a lot of time in front of the computers, and of course you need a computer when you use Arduino, but you have something else that you can do with your hands. Also, you have the yeah, wiring. definitely. Yeah, so that's also a really nice thing. Yes. Uh, I think you, uh, if there is some questions now uh, from the audience, uh, there's a chance to ask from Claudio. Let's see if there's, there were some, but I noticed that uh, they were already answered. Uh, Let's see, otherwise we can move forward and I can yeah. leave the question for the end. So there's a, Jan uh, is asking if the, uh, if the part of uh, the content that will explain the fundamentals of coding and programming, uh, we explain all the example codes, for example. Yeah, or, sure. And yeah, like the, yeah, the same way as the electronics are explained, the programming is explained, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. I mean, it, this delay is terrible. <laughs> it's like oh, we sorry. are talking on each other <laughs> every time. <laughs> But yeah, no, no, of course, uh, all, all the lectures and all the content uh, is really step by step. And there is, I, I would like to underline it, there is no need of prior knowledge on anything. So there is also another thing, but I don't know if Aaron will talk about it. Uh, we have also uh, the things that we've called invention spotlights. There are like, um, let's say, in order to have a deeper understanding on the topics, uh, we, we've we added some historical facts uh, related to, to science and physics directly in the product. So it's really pedagogical in a step-by-step -step, uh, point of view. So yeah. that's it, that is it. I, I don't want to take too much time. Yeah. Uh, I will I will well, stay here for the Q&A. Uh, so if yeah, there is uh, I, I think, something, I will ask you I think this is later. It. Yeah, this is it. We we're, we can have a talk with Aaron. He's going to talk more about the student kit, and Teres is going to have the a live demo of one of the lessons. So we're going to have a lot of awesome. So if there's if there's questions for student kit, I'm sure rest of the people can also answer to those. But thank you, Claudio. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay. So next it's Roxana. Yes. Hello, thank you, Claudio, and thank you, Melissa. So it's time for our third guest. So he's the mind behind the Student Kit curriculum. So let's bring him. Hello, Aaron. Hello, how are you? How good, and you? I'm doing well, very well. Thank you for coming today. How are you? All good? Yeah, doing good. So Aaron is joining from the US in Pittsburgh, right? Right, Pittsburgh, yeah. Kansas, not Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ah, we have okay. H on the end of our Pittsburgh. So. <laughs> so, 
Aaron, uh, he's a curriculum developer and he works at Pitsco, which is one of our, it's our educational partner in the US, correct? That's right, yeah. So Aaron, could you please uh, explain us what does a curriculum developer do? Right, so uh, at Pitsco, one of the things that we truly believe in, it's, it's the heart and soul of what we do is hands-on education. Uh, we really think that students will learn better when they're applying these concepts that they're learning in some hands-on project. And so everything that we do at Pitsco uh, is built around uh, hands-on activities, hands-on lessons. Uh, and that's why Arduino was such a great partner for us um, because you really can't do electronics without doing it hands-on. And so um, it's, been, it's been a great partnership and uh, we're excited to continue that partnership. Nice. Um, so uh, I'm a curriculum developer. Uh, I started out doing mostly STEM curriculum here at mm -hmm. Pitsco. Um, we like to say that we were STEM before STEM was popular. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, my background is, is physics. Um, but here recently, just in the last three or four years, uh, I've switched over to doing robotics and coding curriculum. We have our own robotics platform. Uh, mm -hmm. called Petrix uh, here at Pitsco. And uh, the coding aspect of that is based on Arduino technology. So again, it's, it's a great partnership uh, mm -hmm. for us. Um, you can see some of our tet my Tetrix robots back there behind me. Uh, <laughs> nice. But, but uh, um, so that's what I've been doing. And uh, when we um, were approached by Arduino about creating the student kit, um, then uh, because of my background in, in coding and robotics, it was a natural fit for me to be the one that developed the curriculum and so forth, so. Cool. So then now that we're talking about the student kit, how was the development of the curriculum material of the kit? What was your, your goal for this kit? Right. Uh, mm -hmm. so one of the first things that we wanted to do right off the bat was we wanted this to be the first experience for students that are just getting into Arduino. Um, mm -hmm. Before they get into other Arduino education platforms like CTC Go or 101, um, we wanted this to be the first experience. And so we looked at educational standards for uh, technology, for coding. Um, there, there aren't any real national standards for electronics, so to say. So we looked at state standards, uh, places where they have electronics courses at the high school level. Um, and we just started putting together kind of a concept map of things that we felt like we needed to cover um, mm -hmm. when it came to standards um, and what those expectations were. Not only uh, concept expectations, but also skills. What are the skills that students mm -hmm. needed to develop uh, to be successful uh, in coding or in electronics? And so um, after we kind of put all that information together, we went and we looked, we did an analysis of some of the other uh, Arduino education mm -hmm. products and looked at where they mapped out against those concepts. And then from there, since we wanted this to be the first experience, we worked backwards and decided, well, these are the things, these are the core concepts, the fundamentals um, that we really want students to be able to uh, get nailed down before they move on in their uh, Arduino experience. And so that's kind of where we started uh, was mm -hmm. with those standards, those concepts, uh, we developed a curriculum map uh, that we worked with together with our, uh, a team from Arduino. And uh, from there, it, uh, the map went through a lot of several different iterations as, as we uh, kind of brainstormed and threw ideas back and forth. And, and eventually we had a solid plan in place to move forward with development. Um, we decided on 10 lessons with an introduction. Uh, Arduino, mm -hmm. you know that everything starts with zero with Arduino. So. <laughs> Lesson zero is the introduction. Yeah. And, um, from there, uh, we just started writing um, and uh, ideas came in as, as we wrote, um, as we uh, sent stuff back and forth to review through the Arduino team. Um, and uh, it went through the, the development process. Um, there were several review steps along the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Arduino would review and we'd come back and revise. Um, our editing team looked at it, and then we do a revision. We had student testing uh, mm -hmm. that was done, and we did revisions after that. Uh, and then finally, our, our QA testing um, and uh, a final revision from there before it was turned over to go onto the online platform. So, 
Yeah, that, that's super interesting, like, uh, because this is the first kit we have for really young uh, students. Uh -huh. So I, I really like the way you approach this foundational electronics and programming and getting like by the hand to start uh, learning this. So it's, it's really, really step by step. So Right. Yeah. yeah. Our goal was to not only tell them what to do, but why they're doing it. How, why is this important? Why are these coding concepts or these electronic concepts important? Don't just add that capacitor to your circuit. We're going to tell you what the capacitor does and how it works as you're adding it on there. So, so that it's then what would you say? What was the, it was the most important thing, like the how and the what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the how and the what, the why, answering those questions um, so that students can get those fundamental concepts uh, mm -hmm. from the beginning. Yeah. So you're, you're also familiar with the starter kit, right? Uh, right. The one that, so right. What, what would you say it's the main difference between both? Because for both, you can start working with Arduino. But what would you say is the main difference between both? Right. Um, so the student kit, as its name implies, is really designed uh, for education in mind. Um, mm -hmm. It's designed to be used in the classroom or at home, um, working remotely, um, but in an educational environment. So the, the starter kit, I would say, is more for hobbyists and uh, mm -hmm. people that are, are getting into Arduino. So there's not a lot of like teacher support uh, in there. Um, sometimes uh, it's more about the project that you're developing than it is about learning con specific concepts. Whereas the student kit is um, more about the fundamentals of coding and, elect and electronics. Um, why, are, why do things work the way that they do? That's one of the reasons why we sent the multimeter as a part of this kit. We want them to be able to explore their circuit and understand how the current is flowing through it and what happens uh, in series versus parallel circuits and, um, and all, all those important electronic concepts to understand um, more of the basics. And so I'd say that's one of the big differences is uh, there's, there's a lot more explanation, a lot more step-by-step -step, uh, mm -hmm. walking you through how to build the circuit, um, those kind of things. Yeah, right. So what would you say your advice to students, parents, and educators that want to start using the student kit or they are already using it? Right. Um, so I would say, um, a couple things. Um, number one uh, is, uh, I think one of the cool things about it is it's very flexible. Um, you can use it however you want to use it. Um, it was designed for students to go sequ sequentially through the lessons because, the uh, as Melissa said, they, they do build off of each other uh, as far as uh, coding concepts and also electronic concepts. Um, but there's a lot in there. There's a lot of resources where you can that are direct links where you can jump out uh, of the main flow of the content and learn about a particular topic and then come back to right where you left off and continue through that. Um, there are kind of time expectations um, that we set out how long it should take to go through it. But I would say um, that those are very flexible. You can spend the time that you want to to be able to dive in deep with it, um, especially uh, working remotely, uh, yeah. where um, you, you, you're not limited to a 45 minute class period or, or whatever, um, at least not normally anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, take advantage of the flexibility, flexible nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would say is um, try to, and I think uh, Claudio uh, was mentioning this, um, Try to find somebody that you can work along with, whether that's a parent or a sibling. Um, uh, it's always better when we collaborate and learn together. Um, so I think one of the questions previously was, do parents need to know anything about coding? No. Um, we even wrote it so that teachers don't have to know anything about coding or electronics. It, it certainly helps, but mm -hmm. uh, this was developed so that students can be the experts and learn to be the experts. Um, there are a lot of teacher tips. There are a lot of hints along the way for teachers on what they should be seeing, what they should be looking for, how to check for student understanding, um, those kind of things. Um, but uh, yeah, going back to where I started, try to find somebody that you can collaborate with. It, it makes learning a lot more fun when you're working together. 
especially some of the projects, uh, it can be a little bit tricky to do it by yourself, uh, trying to hold the leads or the multimeter in place while you're pushing a button, um, those kind of things. So yeah, um, work with somebody if you can. Yeah, it's a perfect excuse for parents and children to work together and learn. Exactly, yeah. So Aaron also shared with us his favorite project from the student kit, which is yeah. this. Let me see if we can listen to what Aaron is saying on the video. Okay. Can you listen to the video? Yeah. Um, I can barely hear it, yeah. Oh, okay. But then you can, yes. So you, you say that you really like music, so you really enjoy to building this project, right? That's right. Uh, this is my favorite project. It's similar to one in the student or in the yeah starter kit, mm -hmm. uh, but this one's a little bit different because this one has a full octave of notes. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I love music. Um, have always enjoyed uh, just the creative nature of it and, and writing music and uh, so forth. So um, this one I love because it combines technology with the arts, um, a way that students can be creative and be expressive. Um, we encourage them to uh, either play their own songs on the keyboard or write their own songs. Um, and so just the ability to combine, I also love science. And so the science of sound and, and how we hear sounds and how sounds are generated through vibrations and frequencies and um, all of those things are covered in lesson eight, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, uh, they go and they build their keyboard and they get to experiment with it and play with it and uh, be creative with it. So great thank you so much for sharing the project and that's it for for me to uh, the questions that we have prepared for you thank okay. you thank you so much for sharing uh we have a question from jan michael so is a curriculum for the curriculum is in aligned to different international standards like ngss and common core standards um the the ngss and the common core were used when we mapped out everything. Uh, and so those are some of the standard sets that we looked at uh, when we decided what kind of concepts we needed to be addressing. Uh, for NGSS, especially the engineering standards, um, uh, we do address some science standards, uh, not a lot, but um, like I mentioned, uh, the science of sound is in there and how we hear. So there's a few science standards that we address with that one. Uh, for Common Core, um, there is some math that uh, we do in there. Um, especially as they are learning about Ohm's law and how uh, current and resistance works in a circuit. Um, and so um, we do address some common core standards, um, but uh, that wasn't our main focus. I would say our main focus was on coding and um, uh, electronics or technology. Great. There you go, John Michael. Thank you. Is there another question for Aaron? No? Okay. So if we have more questions, we will let you know, Aaron, <laughs> so you can help us. So again, Aaron, thank you for, very much for joining. It was really enlightening, uh, really interesting to know what happened like behind with this curriculum development. So thank you so much. You're welcome. It's great to talk to you. Thank you. See you soon, I hope. Okay, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. So thank you so much uh for aaron now Teresa is back hi hello so let's move on Rox, are you gonna be here with me i'm gonna present the demo for the student kit so i need our melissa yes Great. so um this is the platform that you see for the student kit that you've been asking for and all of the lessons is here. Everything that Aaron and Claudia has been talking about is on this platform and you get access to this platform when you purchase uh, the products. It's inside the box. So all of the instructions are in the box. There are 11 lessons uh, that, are, that are talking about different electronic concepts and programming 
uh, I'm going to show you the Lightwave Reader, which is one of the late um, last lessons. So at this moment, the students know quite a bit already because they've gone through many of the lessons, um, but they all look similar. They will know what they will learn about, how much time it takes. There is an overview of the project that they will be learning. So it's a lesson, but it's also a practical lesson. So they will end up with a project in each lesson. There's some vocabulary. Uh, and also we explain how the different components work. There's a list of components so that they can collect everything they need in the beginning. Uh, and then they will learn theory. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of nice images, and graphics, so that it's more interesting. Yeah, so we're just scrolling down super fast because as Aaron was mentioning, since we're working with younger students, the explanations are super detailed. So, but as Therese was mentioning, the structure of the content in the platform, it's, it's basically mm -hmm. the same sections. Mm -hmm. Mm. But of course, the, the content is according to the topic we're addressing. Exactly. So. so in this project, the students will learn how to use a component called the phototransistor, mm -hmm. which is a component that kind of detects the light. So it's like a backwards LED. Uh, and then they will also learn how to collect the data and plot it inside something called the serial plotter so that they can see all of uh, the data that they have collected. So I will show you the project when I switch to my other camera just in a second. Let's see if this works. Yeah, so we Perfect. have a project here. Mm -hmm. And I detach it for a moment, but if I attach the plus and the minus again, you see that we have a phototransistor over here that is collecting the light, uh, and then it sends the information to the board. Uh, and I will also show you how to visualize this data. So I'm going to share my screen in a second here. Let's see if this works. So inside the Arduino IDE, there's something called the serial plotter where the students can visualize the information that they collect uh, here from the phototransistor that's behind here. Uh, and the servo motor is uh, moving the phototransistors to collect light from different angles. Now, the light that I have here is pretty similar, but if I kind of cover the phototransistor, you will see that uh, the graph goes down, so it becomes darker. Yeah, so that's the one of the projects the students will end up with from one of the lessons. And I think that was it. Let's yeah, it's, it's really interesting how cool things they can build with a few components, as you see, Mm -hmm. Therese is not using that many components to build something really cool. And also, like the students will see on the graph that Therese showed, the behavior of the of the light sensor. So, you know, like I, I think Melissa and Claudio were mentioning this, like Arduino is about controlling the physical world. So it's really interesting that young students can actually see what the servo is doing and the light sensor in a visual way using the serial plotter. So it's a really nice cool experiment to try and see exactly uh, yeah and always the next step is then that what would you like to use this kind of a project for so you can you can modify the uh the sketch or you can modify the circuit to answer to some of the problems that you have and you want to kind of solve by creating something yourself like we had zach uh building the timer for for his saxophone lesson Exactly. And remember that we have these invention spotlights. So in this case, we also talk about the radars and waves. So the students can be familiar and help them giving more context about what they're building, what is this for, how it's related to the real life. So we have this mix, which is really interesting. So the learning be more significant and valuable for them. So it's a really cool demo. I love that project. Yeah, it's super nice. So let's see. Yeah, like someone in the audience, they have uh, some questions about mm -hmm. the platform in general, the project. Some nice comments. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
there's another question here from yeah from again um yes we have the we we have the the logbook that we were mentioning you can download it in a p it comes it includes in the platform to download it in a pdf form so we have a questionnaire and like a tables to fill about each of the nine lessons and two projects. So the idea is that once they build this project, for example, they will have two answers and uh, some questions on the logbook, and that helps the students to reflect upon what they did and also help the teacher to to track their progress. So that's why we have the logbook. Yeah, and those two are open and the projects that we have we have in the middle and in the end. So you first go through some of the lessons then you have an open-ended project where you use the knowledge and skills that you learn from the from the lessons and there you kind of also can evaluate Assessment. if the student has actually learned those topics so if you should go back to some of the concepts then explain them further for example and there we have a scoring table and uh wait uh both for the teacher and for the student to see and understand as like what are the skills that they should have learned so far Aaron is also telling me here that there's also grading rubrics that are provided for the assessments. Um, that's also good to know. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, th there's a way to evaluate the students and track like their progress. But you guys, as, as you remember, we also have these quizzes. So you can also have quizzes with your students using some of this content to make it like different and more engaging. So you can definitely mm -hmm. use the logbook and then also try quizzes. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Yeah, and talking about quizzes, should we have Talking one? about quizzes. Quiz time. It's time for our quiz. So the last week we didn't have a quiz, so this time, of course, we have a quiz for you. Uh, let me just share my screen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna... you, know, you know you need your phones closed. Yeah, so while I'm sharing my screen, you can go grab your phone because this yes. is a quiz where everyone can participate, even you guys in Facebook and YouTube. Yeah, Aaron and Claudio, you just need to play as well. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so this time I tried to add this QR code. So if you have a QR code scanner in your phone, just scan this code. Or if you don't, you can use the normal way of go to Menti and use the code. Minty.com. I don't I don't mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the QR code goes to the right place at the moment. Okay, if the code doesn't go to the right place, don't use the code. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, it just give me the QR code, but I don't know, maybe someone else has a better phone also. Uh -huh. I don't know. Well, just in case, maybe it's better to go to this. To the so side. I can see some reactions already, which means that we're someone found someone found the quiz so okay, okay. while we're waiting for participants um i can just tell you that this is uh, a way that you can also score your students or kind of have a quiz with them there are a lot of different ways having quizzes menti is just something that i use but you can use whichever their kahoot there's a lot of them so after using the student kit or the starter kits you can have like a small quiz like this so I will wait for a while for the student, uh, for the participant. You, so please grab your phone and no. join. Uh, for me, uh, Therese, for me, it says, sorry, but this presentation is no longer active. Oh, really? So maybe don't use the QR code then. Can you use the normal code? Yeah, use the normal code. So don't, don't use the scan. If I maybe move on to the next slide, we can skip this. I don't know why I can't. Yeah, so go to menti.com and use the code. Okay, I can see that some people are are there, but for some reason I can't access it. So then I just need to cheer for you guys watching. <laughs> yeah, if you've been participating in the previous quizzes, it can also happen that your phone has remembered that quiz. Yeah. Uh, so it could be that. I can see that I have a lot yeah, of reactions. So Let me try I will it. move on in a while. I think if I go oh, to the next. Yes, I mean. Can, I think add yourself. 
Yes. Great. So we talked today about the student kit, which we created to meet the needs of younger students. Uh, so my questions for you today is, what is the youngest recommended age to start using the student kits? And we have realized the previous time that there is kind of a delay of the broadcast, about 10 seconds. So what I'm trying to do is to read the question first, wait 10 seconds, and then press the game button so that you guys can participate on time. Let's see. It works for me too now. Wow, great. Yes. <laughs> so we can see that most of you listened, which is great. So <laughs> the questions will be a bit about the student kit, but also I will test your knowledge in electronics. So be prepared. Okay, so moving forward. As Aaron said, the the kit is has a more of an educational focus than the starter kit, which is why we included a tool uh, so that the students can take uh, ele electricity measurements such as currents, voltage, and resistance. So my question is, what is the name of this tool? Answer on your phones now. Ah, let's see if you remember. Yes. Oh, I can't see. I can't see the, the results, but. Time's up. Oh, yeah. Great. It's a multimeter, as Aaron mentioned before. I think we have a scoreboard. Oh, a leaderboard for us. We're not finished yet. Well, ah, oh, Aaron is in the second place. <laughs> Of course. And HP is the fastest. I wonder who HP is. A lot of players this time. Great. Okay. Super close. Hmm. It's super close. I think all of these people have answered correct, but just different timings. Just need to be faster. <laughs> exactly. So, um, before you saw a demo of the student kit that I showed you, and uh, one of the components I mentioned was the phototransistor to measure light. So the question is, which one of these images shows the phototransistor? A, B, C, or D? Can you point out the phototransistor? Hmm. Tan, tan, tan. Tan, tan, tan. <laughs> Get ready. Be Get fast. Ready. <laughs> Yeah, I have a few seconds to answer. Three, two, one. Ooh, wow. Almost everyone answered correctly. <laughs> yeah, you were seeing it here. I have it here at my desk. So it's the small component that looks like an LED, but it's not. It's all translucent and has a flat top at sometimes, but in our case, it has. All right, Great. moving on to the next question. Let's see if we can click. Mm, yes. So another thing I showed you was the thing to monitor your graph or your data with a graph inside the IDE. And my question is, what is the name of this tool? Ooh. So it was this tool mm -hmm. where you saw the light going up and down and the angle of the servo. That's a good one. Mm. Hopefully I managed to sync this better this time. <laughs> yeah, you're doing now we have hmm. Yeah, it tells me that my internet connection internet connection appears to be slow. So Yeah, but it's it's going. Well, it's so. a bit more tricky actually. 
But serial plotter is the right word for this tool. Nice. Yeah, we also have a serial monitor. We do have a serial monitor, that is correct, but it's not the one that uh, plots the data in a graph. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So in the student kit, Ooh. the students will also learn how to read schematics. Uh, and this is the schematic of the light wave radar that you just saw, which leads us to the uh, last question. Which of the following symbols represents an LED? Is it A, B, C, or D? Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Ooh. Tricky. What's a good one? <laughs> Five. We have a few seconds. Four. Was this the I'm last so question? Ooh. Yes. Mm -hmm. <gasps> a lot of correct answers. So it was the third one, the C. A is Very similar, but A is actually, I think, the phototransistor, which is reversed LED. They mm. really know we should make this more complex. Yeah. Harder. I think we should have <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a smart audience. Yeah. Moving on. We have a winner. Yeah. Who can it be? Oh, it's super tight. Oh, which one? Oh, I it's Aaron. Congratulations, <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Good job. Uh, please share your results on social media if you want to. Uh, it was great having all of you participants here. Thanks also for uh, to our guests, Claudio, Aaron, and Zach. Thank you so much. Thanks. For everyone. Okay, let's see. And thank you for coming, all of you guys. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Aaron was sweating there at home and he needs to, <laughs> need to know this, he needs to be fastest. <laughs> I think this is this is it. We're yeah. jumping around a bit, but yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. All that we had for this time. And congrats again to Aaron, and thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Therese. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, too. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice see weekend. We'll see you next week. See you next yes. week. And if you haven't checked, <clears throat> we published a new training video today for the starter kit. And our star, Therese, is there. So Featuring the video. Well, I mean, the new <laughs> training video, so pick it out. It's... Yeah, remember that every week we publish a new one. So yeah. make sure to check out the remote site learning. Bye. Thank you. See you next Thursday at four. Bye. Bye.